This video is a brief overview to drawing in the software. There are a number of ways to draw vectors and a number of tools to aid you in that drawing process. We are going to cover the basics as an introduction to drawing, but many of the other tutorials will teach you a variety of techniques in much more detail. Before we start, with any vector drawing exercise, it's always a good practice to review your snap settings to ensure you are using the most efficient settings for the type of vectors you're going to be creating. So we have a very simple part on the screen with the settings as per typical settings that most people start the software with. If we go up to our snap options, which can be found under edit snap options or similarly F4 on the keyboard, you're faced with a form with a number of parameters displayed. On the left hand side are very much the simple snapping options such as snap to guides, snap to grid, um, the ability to snap to job center and corners, being able to specify our snap radius which is the proximity with which we need to be close to a corner before we snap to it. And then of course on the right hand side we have some of the more cooler tools to aid us with vector creation which are the geometry snapping and smart snapping. Okay, So typically when you start the software snap to grid will be switched off and under the smart snapping object bounds will be switched off. OK, now with that, if we look to the top menu here, you can see three different snap options. What you have, first of all, is the geometry snapping, which is currently on because it's shown in blue. To the right of it, we have smart snapping, which is on once again, shown in blue. And we have our grid snapping, which is currently off. But if I select it, that will switch it on. And we can actually verify that by looking at the snap options. And we can see that our snap to grid has now been switched on, which we did from the top menu. OK, now with that switching on, you can immediately see that we have some gray dots on the screen. They are at 0.5 inch spacings on this five inch part. OK, so with that, we can start to explore some of the simple options. But before doing that, I'm just going to switch off the smart snapping okay and we're going to switch off the geometry snapping okay so we've got just the basics displayed okay so with these fairly basic snap options let's take a look at what's available so we're going to come into the polyline tool as i move my cursor into the space you can see the polyline icon and the XY location, which is changing as I move my cursor. In order to add a point, I simply click with the left mouse key and then left mouse key again. You'll see that it is giving the distance and the angle from the previous point. We can also zoom into a particular point on our grid line here. So you can see here at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to zoom into that simple line and you can see that the cursor will change and I've snapped to that point. If I want to move up to here and get close and snap to that point, as I get close, it will automatically snap to it. OK, and again at the top here. Now this is done by the snap radius and we can see that similarly when we snap into the corner. So, so I come to the corner, you can see that snapped and the top right hand corner that snapped there. And similarly, if we want to go maybe to the center of the workplace, so I zoom into the center, you'll see it's picked up that center line there in X and then it will find the one in Y and there we have the center. OK, so there's some fairly basic snapping options. Similarly, some people like to use guidelines as a reference. Now, guidelines are accessed by dragging either the X or Y sort of dimensional menu down or across. So I'm going to come across now and just hold the left mouse key on this sort of uh, uh, toolbar and simply drag that into the workspace and let go. And we've got a guideline created and I'm going to do the same from the top menu and just drop that. So these are in random positions. They've not been locked to anywhere in space. And similarly, now I can come back in and snap my cursor to points on these lines, okay? So that there I've added essentially some construction geometry that will help me define the shapes that I want to create, okay? So with that now, I now want to delete the guidelines. Uh, you can switch them off from the top menu by selecting you can see where my cursor is, switching them on and off. OK, in order to delete, I'm just going to right mouse key over the top, delete guide and do the same for the one in Y. And now just delete some of the original lines because now we're going to move 
on and look at some of the other snap options. So you can see there from the top menu, we've got geometry snapping off, smart snapping off, and grid snapping on. I'm gonna switch that off now, which will switch off the gray points on the screen. And I'm gonna switch on geometry snapping. And you can see if we go to the edit snap options, which is under F4, we've switched off the grid. You can see that shown. And we switched on geometry snapping, which allows us to pick uh, object centers, span endpoints, span midpoints, arc centers, and intersections. So once again, uh, are tools to help us create the vectors that we're looking to do for the particular job. Okay, in order to explain and explore the geometry snapping, I think the best thing to do is to switch the nodes or points on for the individual vectors you can see on the screen. To do that, I'm just simply gonna box pick them all now, so they're highlighted, and I will hit N on the keyboard, which will show all the nodes, it will show the direction of the vectors, it will also show the midpoints, Okay, so we can start to understand the ways in which we can start to snap around. Okay, so with this, I'm going to come across to the polyline tool again, and we can simply pick up the nodes quite easily. So I'm picked on a point on the actual uh, circle there. I'm going to come across now, and it will snap to the corner of my square. Similarly, it's going to snap to this corner. I may want to come down and snap to the midpoint. So as I move my cursor along, it will then change and it's found the midpoint. I come down to my node again on the end of this line and I want to come down to where the midpoint is and it's found the midpoint of that span. Similarly, if I want to find the arc center of this radius that we have here, I can come out now and it will find that arc center. There it is. Okay, I found that. Now I want to come down and maybe find the midpoint of my line here so I can move that across and it's found that midpoint. So we can very easily pick up um, endpoints, midpoints, um, arc centers, arc um, intermediate points. For instance, if we come to this particular vector here and I start to move around the arc, you'll see it's going to pick up. There we go. It's picked up that midpoint. And now we're going to come back down there and we'll find the endpoint. Going to go back round and find the midpoint. We can also click to the center. So this is just showing how we can use geometry snapping to very easily pick up positions, okay, on the nodes and midpoints and arc centers. Okay, so now that we've explored the geometry snapping, let's add in the smart snapping. So I'm going to close out this form now and just delete the line that we've been creating using the geometry snapping and come up to the top menu. You can see that geometry snapping is switched on. And now I'm going to switch on smart snapping, which I'll do from the menu. Come across to edit snap options or F4. And we can see that we've added on smart snapping. But one of the options that is off by default is object bounds, because typically uh, most people don't want to be using it. But we're going to switch it on in order to see this in this particular case. And notice the angular step there is set to 15 degrees. So with smart snapping, we can click to the limits of an object. That's object bounds. We can click to horizontal and vertical lines from any particular point. We can come off tangentially to any particular line, perpendicular to any particular line, um, at any at span geometry and at certain increments. So uh, say 15 degree increments. So with that now, I'm just going to hit OK on that menu. And we're going to look to create some further geometry. OK, so let's take a look at combining the smart snapping with geometry snapping. So I'm going to come across now and select the polyline tool and we'll concentrate on these sort of three vectors in the lower right hand corner. So the two lines and the fillet. Now we're going to look really at the object bounds option first of smart snapping. So if we can imagine a theoretical box that goes round these three vectors, okay? So all I need to do is to wake up the option and you'll come now and I, I simply, I've already found one object bound. I move across to the right and now I've found the other object bound. So clearly I can see that the lower right hand corner happens to be the uh, object bound for the three items, which is ideal because what I want to do is create a line here and then be able to come up and be able to meet um, a tangential position on this arc, which would be very difficult to do as I don't have a point in that position. Similarly, if I want to find maybe the top left hand corner, I can come across now 
and find that position. So it's very easy to find the limits using the object bounds. So if I come across now and wake up the star here, I can simply find um, the object bounds again. So I've found that position and I can come across to the arc that we have here. And once again, I've found the lower right hand corner. But you'll notice that you're getting lots and lots of flicking on the screen because it's automatically giving you lots and lots of these different object bounds, which can in some cases be a little confusing depending upon how you're working. So when you do need to use it, it's very useful, but when you don't, it would be advised to switch it off. So with that, I'm gonna just close that out now and delete this line and come back up to the form, edit snap options, and just switch object bounds off. So with that now, I'm going to look at the other options that we've got by coming back to the polyline tool and really focusing once again on this sort of tangential line that we have here. So what I'm going to do first of all is lock my point onto the end, okay? And with snapping options, I can now go along tangentially to the existing, okay? I can come off orthogonally, in this case Y or X. I can also come down at angular increments, so 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and that angle is set on the form. I can also come off at right angles. In this case, I'm coming off at right angles, okay? And it may be that I want to find an intersection with the angle from another point. So I'm gonna come down now and wake up this bottom point here, come up orthogonally, and we can see that we found now the intersection where we've come off perpendicular from both lines, okay? And once again, I can then come off orthogonally at 90 degrees uh, from that particular position. So now that we've got this point in space, I may need to find the midpoint between this point and the point on the edge of this square. So what I, all I need to do now is I've woken up the first point and I'll need to wake up the second point and to wake up, just hover over it and that creates, that wakes it up. And now I can come back down I can find that midpoint. So you can see that it's a yellow dotted line there and I found that midpoint there and now I can come off again, okay? Uh, another neat option is the ability to create a line tangent to an arc. So I can come up now, you can see I can just come across, click on the arc. Well, I'm not actually clicking, I'm just hovering over it and I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and that creates a line tangent to the arc from the original position, okay? So that gives you an idea of what we can do there. We can come off tangentially, or we can come off uh, perpendicular, or we can come off orthogonally, uh, parallel to X or Y, at uh, angular increments, in this case 15 degrees. We could also find a position that was tangential to an arc, or find a position that was halfway distance between two points. Uh, so there's a wide variety of sort of uh, useful tools to enable you to create your geometry very quickly and very speedily. Okay, so now we've explored all the different types of snapping options when combined with the polyline tool, let's move forward and start creating some new shapes from the create vector menu. So to start with, I'm just going to delete out these vectors and move across to the create vector menu where we have different shapes. We've got circle, ellipse, square, polygon, star, we've dealt with the line, we've got different arc types, uh, different text. That's all within the create vectors area. So first of all, we're gonna move across and select the draw circle command, which will pop open the form we see on the left. Okay, so let's take a look at the four different ways in which we can draw a circle. Now using just the form, I can enter the X value and Y value of the center point. So this is three by 1.5 and then the diameter of two and hit create on the form and that would have created a circle of diameter two with its center point at x3, y1.5. Now if I wanted to keep the diameter at two but be able to specify with my left mouse key where I wanted the center point, then I can simply wander over into the workspace and simply click on the screen and it will have created a diameter two with a center point wherever I click my left mouse key. So I can do this again in the lower left hand corner. Now a third option, if I wanted for instance the same dynamic entering of the center point but I needed to vary my diameter, I can do that by keeping the left mouse key pressed down. So I'm gonna 
click on the screen and then move the mouse with the left mouse key depressed and you can see that it's displaying the diameter on the screen and when for instance I've got to diameter 1.5 I can release the mouse and it will have created the circle of diameter 1.5 with the center point where I first clicked on the screen. Now the fourth option is used to is to use the uh, keyboard quick keys along with the left mouse key. So in this case I'm going to once again click on the screen and start to grow but what I may want to do is to specify the radius or diameter using the keyboard because it might be something specific for instance. Now by default this particular quick key uses the radius so I might want for instance a diameter 2 in which case I would hit 1 on the keyboard and return and that creates a circle of diameter 2 with its center point where I first started to grow the circle. Now similarly I can specify that using the diameter rather than the radius. So once again I'm going to grow this now and rather than enter 1 on the keyboard and hit return I'm going to enter 2 and then a D afterwards and that has created the same circle as what we just did but this time I specified the diameter by adding D after the two to create exactly the same. So that is four different ways we've been able to create a circle using both form and the uh, left mouse key and quick keys on the keyboard. Okay, so the next stage is really to look at how we might want to modify these vectors. In this case, we've got six circles on the screen. We've already got one selected. So I can simply go into the create vector form for the circle and we can see it's already extracted the center point of the selected circle and its diameter. Now if I use the shift on the keyboard I can now come across and pick another circle and the center point and diameter are automatically extracted out into the form where I can modify them if required. Okay now if I close the form down what I can do as well is just select the, any vector hit E on the keyboard and it will automatically open the shape editor for that particular item. In this case if I create a square and I close the form down, if I select the circle and hit E it will open the draw circle form. If I click the uh, square and hit E it will open the draw rectangle. Okay, So it will automatically uh, open up the relevant shape editor form where we can make further modifications. Okay, so we've used really the circle as a method of showing the different ways we can create the vector and also the different ways in which we can edit that vector. But it should be noted that all other Create Shape tools have very similar ways of how they can be created and edited. Uh, firstly, you can specify the shape and size from within the form. Uh, secondly, you can specify a size for the shape and we can position the shape into the 2D view according to its anchor point. So in this case with the circle it was using the left mouse key to define the center point. Uh, we can simply uh, free draw the shape by clicking the left mouse key and then defining its parameters. And then also we can use the transform shortcuts to put in accurate dimensions without having go to the form. And if you would like to go to the help and look at the keyboard shortcuts, you can then scroll down and see actually further down the different options for creating um, different items. So we can see the polyline tool, draw circle, draw ellipse, draw rectangle, and that's all contained in the uh, shortcuts that can be accessed from the help. Okay, so that really completes this short introduction to drawing in the software. And as I said, there are many tutorials that demonstrate a variety of techniques to drawing in the software. And a selection of those can be found in the related videos for this tutorial.